Hello and uh, welcome. In this video today I am just going to be showing you the um, basic tools you will need to knit your first scarf in the round or for the basics for any beginner knitting project really. First of all we're going to need some yarn and a lot of yarns come in um, this sort of format and this is a skein of yarn. Now you can't knit straight from this, it has to be wound up. So most beginners will get a ball of yarn or a cake of yarn. Um, you can hand wind this though. Um, so when you unravel this, it does. Um, it's in a big circle of yarn and you need to wind that into a ball. And I'll probably show that in a, another video. But essentially, you need some yarn of some sort. For a scarf, it's probably better to have something that's an animal fibre or uh, like wool or something along those lines so it will be nice and warm. You also then need a knitting needle. This is the Chow Goo, which is what I recommend and it's a 16 inch. For this particular scarf that I am recommending, this is the size of needle you need. When knitting with a circular needle, you'll have your two needle, small needles and then a cable connecting them. And this is so you can knit round and round in a spiral. The um, length of the cable on these needles is very important because it has to be very close to the circumference that you are knitting so that you can get those stitches round. If it's too big, you won't be able to uh, join in the round and knit successfully in the round. If it's too tight, it'll be uncomfortable. And likewise, if they're too bunched up, it won't be good. When you're knitting, you want to be able to get a smooth flow around the needles and that will keep your stitches even. For this, um, it is a 16 inch or a 40 centimeter cable that you will need. You don't necessarily need the chow goo. Any 16 inch or 40 centimeter circular needle will work, uh, wood or metal, whichever you prefer to try. Uh, metal needles have more slip and enable you to knit more smoothly and fastly whereas um, sometimes wood is better for beginners because you can uh, it grips the yarn a bit more and helps the stitches stay on your needles the other thing that you could get for this is a um, beginning of round marker. Now it's not essential in this pattern because it is only a basic pattern, but um, it is good to get in that habit because generally for most patterns where you're knitting in the round, because you're just knitting in the spiral, as we've discussed, you do need to know where your beginning of round starts. Now, these light bulb stitch markers are fantastic for beginners. Um, you can use them for lots of things, marking in your patterns, all that sort of thing, marking your knitting for certain things in patterns. And you can also um, count rows and mark them every 10 rows, things like that. But you can also use these for your beginning of round marker. So I highly recommend that you have some of these on hand. It will just make your life so much easier can also be used as a small cable needle if required. Now, I just wanted to show you this as well because this is also a beginning of round marker. Now, this is a closed ring, as you can see, and um, not essential, but nice to pretty up your knitting, but it does the same job as this will, but this has more uses for beginning knitters. Also, another thing that I would, oh, <laughs> highly highly recommend especially when you're first knitting in the round is these and these are needle stoppers and i'll just sort of show you on here they just go on the end of your needles when you um, are putting your knitting away for the day um, 
and um, just stops any stitches falling off. It's quite common when you're first knitting uh, and learning to knit that you do end up dropping stitches off your needles. This will stop you getting into a mess when you leave your knitting and come back to it to discover that 10 stitches have fallen off and that's not a nice thing for anybody. As you become more experienced, you will be able to deal with that a lot better. But when you're first learning the basics, definitely need something. If you don't need anything fancy, again, you can get something more. These were just off Amazon. Uh, they do the job. And so that's the beginning um, essentials that you need. Basically, it's these two to actually be able to cast on and start. So as I was explaining in the last video about yarn and how you will buy your yarn, a lot of them will be in skeins like this and you can't knit from this. So I thought I'd better just for anybody who's a total newbie, never knit before, I'd just explain. This is a skein of yarn, which as I said, you can't knit from this is a ball of yarn and these can be knit from straight away you don't need to do anything with those um, but if you do get a skein of yarn and you want to wind it um, you can use a swift and ball winder but if you're new to knitting and you don't know if you're going to um, enjoy knitting or not then that's highly unlikely that you're going to invest in those two pieces of equipment so as I've said you can wind it into a ball of yarn and this is what it would essentially look like just a lot bigger this is a small one that I've just used in a sock I've just knitted or doing it on a winder is like this into a cake some yarn stores will actually wind it into a cake for you so if they offer that service um, that's fantastic I know some of the online stores I think Tangled Yarn in the UK does that, but I'm sure that some of them do. And if you ask them, um, I'm sure they won't mind doing that for you. So skein of yarn, which you can't knit from, that's a cake, that's a hand wound ball, and this is a ball of yarn. Quite a lot of commercial yarns, sock yarns are like this, and they might be a good starting point because it's easier for you to uh, knit from uh, straight away without any of the worry about getting this into a form that you can knit. Now it's time to cast on. So I've got my ball of yarn and I've got that on my right hand side. Just for context of the video, I am right-handed, so that is the way I'll be showing you how to knit. When you're casting on, you need to, um, because it's a long tail cast on, you need a tail that is long enough for the number of stitches that you want to cast on and also for a small amount of tail about this length so that you've got enough to um, sew in at the end. So an easy way to work this out is, now we want 100 stitches, so I'm just going to wrap the yarn around my needle 10 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, and that gives me approximately um, enough yarn for casting on 10 stitches. Now I am going to... That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whoop, ten, eleven, and I will just pull a bit extra just to be sure because I hate to run out. Okay, and there you can see I've got my um, tail and I was about to proceed then without explaining. Now, first of all, you need to create a slip knot. So 
I'm going to wrap my yarn around my finger and then with this other hand I am just going to pull the loop wider and then I will pull that through and then you tighten it and that creates a slip knot. Now I'll just show you again. So I've got my yarn held like so and I'm going to wrap it around my pointer. Then I am going to grab the loop with these two fingers, pull it open and then I'm just going to slip that through and there you have your loop and you just pull that a bit tighter and now this should move up and down with ease. And now you're going to pop this on your needle and then you just tighten it up. Sorry, it's a bit tricky doing this on camera. Okay, now when we go to um, cast on, slipped off. See, this is the thing with metal needles, it can slip off quite easily. And I'm sorry my needle's clanging on the table, I've just popped it down there. Okay, so we now have our slip knot on the needle. Now that's classed as our first stitch and we want a hundred stitches on here. So your yarn ball is this way and that is the going to your ball and then your tail is over this side. Now similar to how we do the slip knot we are going to be wrapping now so I've got my thumb above the yarn I'm going to wrap it and take it under and that causes a loop. I hope you can see that. So that's a loop on my thumb. Now I am going to just put my needle inside the loop. And now I'm going to use the yarn that is attached. And I've got, and as you can see, I've got a grip on my needle now so that this all doesn't fall away. So this hand can move freely. And then I'm going to be getting this yarn that's attached to the ball. And I'm going to take it up behind the needle, down between the needle and between my thumb, if you can see that, like that. And then the loop that is around my thumb needs to come up and over the needle and then we tighten it. And I'll show you that again. So my thumb is here and I've got my yarn held just under here so that it, it stays um, taut. So my thumb goes over and under and then I'm parallel to the needle and I've got a loop around my thumb. Then I'm going to pop the needle inside the loop. Then I'm going to use my thumb and finger to hold the needle. Then I am going to pick up this yarn which is wrapped around my fingers already going up behind the needle down in between my thumb and the needle and then I'm going to lift my thumb so that I can take the yarn over the needle and that's our third stitch so I'll show you again thumb is above the yarn I'm going to go behind and under to create a loop I'm going to go into that loop with my needle and then I'm going to hold the needle with my hand that's got the loop and then round the back of the needle down between the thumb and needle and then lift the loop and over it goes and tighten it up and there we've got four stitches. So one more time in slow motion and you can obviously pause this video at any point. Um, so thumb parallel to the needle I'm going to take it behind to create a loop. My needle goes in and then I hold with my thumb and finger. I take my yarn round the back, down between the thumb and needle, pull the loop from my thumb over and then tighten. And there you can see we've now got five stitches on the needle. Now yours might not look like this because when you're first learning to cast on it is difficult to get the tension right and to get the stitches looking even. At this stage don't worry about that. What I would say as well is have a few um, practice runs at doing the cast on. Do this cast on, take it off, just pull it like this and then you can start again. So we'll do our slip knot again. 
So I've gone around my pointer finger. I've gone under with my other hand, pulling the loop out and you just bring the thread through the back. And there is the slip knot. Then I want to put that onto my needle and tighten it up. And then I am going to start casting on and that remember the slip knot is counted as your first stitch. And so Casting on won't take as long once you get quicker. The hardest part will be keeping count of the stitches. And there you see, I have cast on the um, five stitches again. Now I will um, cast on the rest of the stitches and come back to you once I've done that. But like I say, feel free to rewind the video, practice a good few times at casting on until you feel confident and then um, come back and watch the next one. I've now cast on all my stitches. For this demonstration, I've just cast on a random number, but just made sure I had enough to be able to join in the round on this needle. Um, your cast on should look like this. There is a side that is bumpy and then there's a side that is like a beautiful twist and that's the side that will show on the outside. Um, when you come to beginning knitting uh, bow and joining in the round, both your tails should be on this side and it's very, very important that we make sure that the... Um, bumps on our stitches are all facing the same way so I will just go around now and check and as you can see the loops of my stitches are at the top of my needle and the twist underneath is along here on the inside now I will make sure before I start knitting that they are all facing that way and as you can see all of them are inside my needle now, this is the point in uh, most um, round knitting patterns that you would put on your beginning of round marker. So if you've got a light bulb stitch marker, I would recommend doing that now. I'm not doing anything fancy to join this in the round. There is a few methods, um, but for this pattern, I don't feel that it is necessary. And for a beginner knitter, this is not necessary in any way. It might be quite tricky with your light bulb stitch marker to keep it out of the way when you first start, but just um, persevere with that. You will get used to it. Once you're on your first round, it will sit nicely between your stitches. Or you can just leave this out, to be fair. You don't have to have it on this pattern. And you can always look for your tail and that shows you where it is. But as you knit more, it'll be harder to do that. So... Just move a little bit closer. This is how it should look before you start. All your bumps are on the inside so that your knitting doesn't twist. And we're going to knit the first stitch. Now I'm just going to make sure that my stitches are moved up. I have got my yarn ready and I just picked it up like this and I'm holding it underneath my hand. So that I can, because I want a nice tension here in the yarn that I'm going to be wrapping around when knitting. So I'm just popping it into the first stitch on this side and uh, oh, and I am going to, can you see how the needle goes through the stitch at the front and out at the back? And this is a knit stitch. And then I am going to wrap my yarn around and now the um, needle needs to go down and you're going to pull through and you're going to pull that loop through that you've just wrapped around your needle and then pop it off and there it should be then that stitch has been knit and it's been transferred to the other needle i'll do that again so the right hand needle goes in between your two your the first stitch and your second stitch on this needle and then you put it through and out the back and then 
wrap the yarn around the needle at the back and down the middle and then you're going to pull your back needle down and as you come through the stitch you are going to catch the thread under there and then pop that off and at this point you will see there might be quite a gap between your um, beginning of round and your next few stitches but on the next through few rounds that should correct itself as you're working you will probably need to push these stitches around and also bear in mind that the first row of any knitting is the hardest one so i'm going to um, show you again and get a little bit closer if i can so we're going to go in between the first and second stitch so that we're picking up that first so if if you can see my needle is between the two stitches and I'm going to go into the middle of that stitch and out the back wrap my working yarn around and through the middle and then I am going to pull down and catch the thread of the yarn sorry on my needle and pull it over and I'll do that again wrap it round pull it down through and off so into the stitch wrap it round pull it down and through and off and obviously you can pause the video at any point take your time look at the steps keep rewinding it and um, if you can see, I'm not sure you can with this yarn, but it might be better than I've done a few more stitches. You start to see a little V forming underneath and that's um, a little layer of stitches that you have knit. Again, so we go in between the first and second stitch, through the centre of the loop and out the back, wrap the working yarn around the needle, then Pull it up until you can bring your needle through catching that yarn and then off again I just need to adjust don't worry if there's a little gap there that will correct itself on the second row okay I'm going to finish this first row and then I will come back and show you now as you can see here I have completed the first row and I've just gone past the beginning of round marker and you can clearly now see some of the little V's starting to develop um, under there and you can see the twist of the um, cast on when you get onto your um, when you get around to the beginning again if you just tighten your tail up it does help with preventing the gap and then as you can see it the second row becomes much much easier to knit on and you just continue in this um, same manner practicing your knit stitches just going round and round and round until you have enough yarn left just enough yarn left to um, cast off with a little bit to sew in the end now um, if you're a little unsure i would suggest that you leave about 10 grams And what I'll do now is I'll just show you one of my own that I'm knitting on at the moment. Now here is one that I have knit quite a bit on as you can see. This is a light fingering weight yarn so it is quite um, a loose uh, gauge fabric. Um, but remember it's going to be um, doubled over when it's used to the scarf and this one is going to be lovely and drapey and soft because of the, the yarn that I am using. It's beautifully soft this yarn as you can see a bit of a fuzz on it. Um, 
So just take off my needle stoppers and I hope you can see, look, this is just one big long tube. And I've got a beginning of round marker in there because then I know that's where I started. And yes, same thing. I'm just knitting round and round and round and that's how much I've done so far. I will just knit until I've got about 10 grams of this yarn left and then I will cast off and this and that's the uh, sort of width that you can expect for the scarf when you do 100 stitches. So I hope that's been helpful. If you've got any questions whatsoever about anything I've said in the videos, feel free to um, leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Good luck. I've just completed knitting my second round of stitches. Not sure how much you can see of that because it is quite a um, dark yarn but um, as you can see i'm back at my beginning of round marker now for the purposes of this video and what i'm next going to demonstrate we're just going to pretend that i have knit my scarf i'm happy with the length and i've got my 10 grams of or approximately 10 grams of yarn left and i'm now wanting to cast off so i'm at my beginning of round marker i'll remove that marker and then I am going to start casting off. Now, just as before, you will knit your first stitch and you will knit your second stitch. Then you will pick up the first stitch you knit of that row which is the second stitch on your right hand needle and then you will just pull it over so your stitch has gone underneath there. So again, then you will knit the next stitch, pick up the second stitch and pass it over the first. And you will keep doing that all the way around so knitting one stitch and passing over the one behind it knitting a stitch passing over the one behind it and as you can see it is starting to create a chain here of stitches that you have cast off when you have completed all the way around and back to the beginning you'll be left with one stitch on your needle like this. So then what you want to do is you want to cut your working yarn. Now you need to cut a long enough tail so that you can sew it in after. And then you pull it through and pull it tight. And there, if you can see, that is your lovely um, cast off edge. Obviously, you would have a long scarf by this point. And yeah, that's the scarf finished.